hello 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 so excuse the white noise um i'm sorry if it's super distracting but i don't have a mic i have never ever recorded my voice like to put on youtube i've always used like a text chat voice and i'm currently using apple headphones to record this anyways um for those of you who are new to my channel uh, this is a really different video from what I posted two years ago. Um, uh, when I posted two years ago, I posted a ton of, like, high-key text chat videos. They were wonderful, by the way. Um, I absolutely ate down with those, and nobody can tell me otherwise, because they were fire. No, they were fire. But, <laughs> for those of you who have stuck around for two years... Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't post for two years and you're still here? But, uh, fuck, um, I sound like an idiot. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I didn't post for two years. Thank you for still being here. <sighs> this doesn't mean text chat videos are going away. I'm in the process of making one right now, actually, and I really like it because I love text chat videos, but it does mean that I'm branching out. Uh, the, la the reason that I quit last time was because I got so overwhelmed with content and, like, with the need to make something, but not having the energy to make the same thing over and over, because I, I don't like getting stuck in patterns. I like routine, but I don't like patterns, you know? Like, posting a video every week, that's routine, but posting the same thing over and over and over, that's a pattern. And I want to get away from that. Um, I'm, I want to make new, this is new, like, this is something new. This is my artwork. Uh, I made it about six months ago. Um, it's, <laughs> it's a Huluva Boss fan piece, obviously. And Huluva Boss is something that's become really important to me in the two years that I've been gone. I, it means a lot to me. Like, it really does. Like, that sounds so stupid, but it does mean a lot to me. I'm autistic, and it's a, it's a fixation. It's something I take a lot of comfort in. It does mean a lot to me. And I do want to include that, which is why I'm showing this here, because this is something that's really important to me, just like Haikyuu was. Haikyuu was also a fixation of mine that resurfaces every once in a while and that is the reason I restarted this channel so I want more art content I want more art I want gaming I want fan fiction readings I love fan fiction I love talking I love yapping can you tell I love speaking it's so fun I don't like doing it in front of people I like talking to myself which is what I'm doing at the moment <laughs> and I sound like a fuck-ass idiot right now but that's okay. I've never done this before. I'm feeling a little awkward. It's completely normal. So yes, I'm going to keep posting. No, they will not all be text chat videos, but that doesn't mean they'll go away. The thing about the text chat videos is that I used to make a ton of text chat videos where they were like in real life segments. Those I'm not gonna make anymore. Don't get me wrong. I'm still gonna make those stories. They're just probably going to be fan fictions now because that's a lot better. It's a much like more streamlined way to tell the story that I have in my head and it's so much more emotional when it's written out and it's not this AI voice going, she crewed, we both crowed together. Like that's not, like you're not gonna, okay, you might cry over that. I've cried over stuff like that, but like, I cry all the time. Whatever. That's not, it doesn't, it's not, rent, it's not gut-wrenching. I need it to be gut-wrenching. Wrenching. What? I need you to want to, like, rip out your heart and, like, throw it on the floor and stomp on it. Okay? Like, I, I need that kind of reaction when you listen to me talking about how, like, I gave Kyotani from Haikyuu fucking bulimia or something. Okay? <laughs> That, I actually, I have written a fic and I want to post that and it's literally about Kyotani's bulimia. Anyway, this sounds so stupid to anybody who hasn't watched my Haiku text. Reference, I gave Kyotani bulimia because I had bulimia at the time. I'm saying at the time like I don't still have issues with it. It's whatever. 
a lot of the stuff that I made, like those characters go through, was me dealing with my own issues. Like the ones where there was like specific videos about it. Yeah, yeah, you're projecting, honey. I think I literally did say I was projecting in the Fudukuchi video, because like, bruh, real. I'm, I'm so dead ass right now. Like real. I know this video is just like kind of me talking randomly, but that's kind of what I want it to be. Like, I'm just coming back. I don't want to have like this crazy, like commentary piece over my stupid fucking stole its art. Okay. I just want to talk about the fact that I'm back and like, I don't know, exist. But that does mean now I have to yap about the art, obviously, because that's what you're looking at. What are you looking at? You're looking at my beautiful masterpiece of Stolitz and Blitz snuggling and cuddling and being emotional and um, what's the romantically constipated? There we go. There we go. I'm so smart. So in this drawing, I like super duper struggled with the sketch like I didn't think it was that bad and then I kept re-watching the speed paint of it and I just I could not do that sketch could I like what were you doing what were you doing uh Stolas's face looked really weird the one thing that still pisses me off about this uh drawing I love this drawing so much let's make that clear uh this is one of my favorite works of art like fan works that I have made in recent history recent history what whatever this is like one of my favorite fan works that I have made recently and I'm so serious when I say it's my favorite it is I printed it out at fucking Walgreens and I hung it up on my wall as a poster that is how much I like this okay it is on my wall right now literally looking at it it's a poster but there's one thing that pisses me off and it's the fact that I made Blitz's hooves rounded because why did I do that? Like, they are they are pointy. Guys, they are pointy as fuck. Like, they could stab a bitch. And I was like, oh, but they'd be so cutesy if they were all rounded and yum 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 yum. Like, shut the fuck up. So yeah, that does still really piss me off. But I don't think anything else about it makes me extremely upset. I, it's really hard to notice. I wish I made it more clear, actually. That's another thing. I wish I made it more clear that their tails are supposed to make a heart together because I look at it and it is, it's not that obvious. And when I tell people that it's supposed to be a heart, they're like, oh yeah, like I can see that it's supposed to be a heart, but nobody will notice it by themselves. And I'm sure now that I'm saying that everybody watching this is like, oh my God, it is a heart. Like, yeah, it's supposed to be a heart. I do wish I made that more clear. Other than that, most of this is like beautiful. I know it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing when like I start shading and stuff, especially in the background. It's like really hard to see the moon. The moon is really hard to see. And Stolas. When I was rewatching this, I could not see anything that I was doing on Stolas. And then suddenly his eyes were glowing. And I was like, hey, so what the fuck? Where did that come from? I feel like I missed a chapter. We didn't miss a chapter. I'm just blind as a bat because I'm farsighted. Also wanted to mention for anybody who as is. Who as is? Who is as invested in the show or like who likes it anybody who likes it I am so sorry for using the color palette from Aussies oh my god I was watching the speed paint and I obviously like I did this six months ago I I don't remember doing this like I I remember making it but I don't remember the process of making it because it took me like nine something hours to make the time on procreate is stupid but like I was re-watching this and suddenly that photo popped up and I felt like I got flash banged. Like, oh my God, it was so bad. Because Aussies is one of those episodes that I never watch. There are some episodes where they're super important to the story, but because they're important to the story, they scare me. 
I get like really freaked out of having really big emotions. So I will avoid them like the plague. Aussies is one of them. I avoid full moon too. I love full moon. I listen to the song. I don't watch the end of the talk, the end of the talk, the end of the episode where they have their talk because it makes my tummy hurt. It makes my tummy hurt. It really does. <laughs> All that to say, I really love this drawing of Stolas and Blitz because I think it represents them as a couple almost perfectly. Like the way that they're both holding on to each other and having these slightly pained expressions at least like blitz's expression is slightly pained right like he's scared he i need to stop saying like i can hear myself and it's getting on my own nose i'm so sorry but even blitz's expression he he's scared and he can't stop himself from feeling that fear of love and that instinctual need to run away from it And that results in him being grabby, like him needing to cling on to something in fear of it disappearing the moment he lets go of it. Stolas' expression, on the other hand, is more somber. It's not exactly... It's not exactly guarded or angry, but it's, it's sad. It's not hesitant, but it's sad. Because all of his connections to love have been so superficial. He's never had this real thing that he can take love from. He's had things he can put love into. He's had thousands of things he can put love into. Stars, Via, Blitz. But he's never been given it. He's never been on the receiving end. And he's never had to give it to have it back. He has always just loved these things around him and not gotten anything in return and even with via via loves her dad but with kids you can't expect them to love you back you can't reach out hoping that you'll get that in return and only reaching out because you want that in return you have to give that no matter what and stolas understands that you have to love your kids unconditionally like So when he starts this new relationship with Blitz and it's something so new and he's never felt this kind of love before, it's very scary for him. And that's why he reacts so oddly. He's so weird in the first season. I love the first season. I love my baby Stolas. But he's weird. And that's because he's never had a romantic relationship. Stella and him don't fucking count, okay? He's never been able to express love and he doesn't know how to and he doesn't know what the other person wants and he doesn't know how to get that back and Blitz doesn't want to give that back. Blitz does have those feelings, he does share those feelings, but he's scared to give it back and that results in him clinging on to Stolas and lashing out and getting aggressive because that's what Blitz does. Blitz argues. They argue until they make up like him and Fizz did, but he can't do that with Stolas. I'm yapping, but like I love, I love this depiction of them so much. And I made this before Full Moon came out, so obviously it didn't really apply then. But now with Mastermind, I feel as though it's it's starting to. The way that they interacted at the end of the episode, though they were both suffering heavily, at least Stolas was suffering heavily. Blitz was suffering in the beginning. But by the end, he was more or less better than he was at the start. And Stolas, on the other hand, just absolutely ate it. Like, he, he, his pupils didn't go away. And the way that they acted towards each other is very telling of their real emotions to one another. Because in that moment, they were both unguarded. I I think it's the first time that they have both just completely fallen apart in front of each other and been there to see it. And the way that Stolas just let Blitz like bathe him afterwards, the way Blitz let Stolas sleep on the couch, 
and let him into his house and Stolas was accepted into Blitz's life, even though they didn't have like a real conversation, it was clear through the song that they both understood each other in that moment. And I think that like this piece that I made sticks a lot more towards like the current state of the relationship than it does to the state of the relationship when I made it which is crazy because like future predictor am I a fucking psychic no (laughs) no you're not idiot (laughs) I don't know though their relationship is so special to me and I think that's because it's so complicated like they have both been right and wrong like they have both fucked up respectively and pretty horribly (laughs) pretty horribly like to each other it's been pretty bad on both ends let's be for real and that's okay like I've had people ask me especially after full moon there was this kid in one of my classes he he knows that I like Haluva Boston that I'm like literally obsessed with it and he talks to me about it sometimes and he was like whose side are you on and I'm not on anybody's side like there is no side to be on the side to be on is on both of their sides as a couple but let let me make that clear let let me make that clear (laughs) because there's no side to be on they're both really messy and traumatized people And the way that they act is understandable of people in their positions. And obviously there's some things that they do that can't be completely excused, but they can be mended isn't the word that I'm looking for, but it's the only word that I can think of at the moment. And the fact of that being so raw I think is what's really attractive about their relationship to me because all of the relationships I have been in have been (laughs) they've been raw because I'm this is so corny I'm a disturbed individual but like I am I have like seven different diagnoses (laughs) like yeah they're gonna be rough and I feel like in every single rom-com like I've ever seen, even ones that are meant to be more realistic, they still have like these happy, lovey, dovey endings or like there's never any real emotional turmoil. Like there's these things happening around them and there's always these things happening around them that's like causing emotional turmoil and causing distress in the relationship. But there's never just emotional turmoil. It's never just somebody working through trauma. It's never just this person existing. It's always an outside force that is causing this person to exist in a specific way that disrupts the story. And not just this person has been through something and because of that they act this way that disturbs the story. And that's what I really like in my romance. I like people who feel realistic to me. I like people who have issues, like, deep-rooted issues. That's why my fucking Haikyuu videos were the way they were. They were... They they were rough at some parts. I've been re-watching them a lot. And I actually love them, even though I made them two years ago. And my writing wasn't that great two years ago. Even re-watching them now, they still felt so real to me (laughs) this is a weird video and I feel like really awkward doing this because I've never done this before and I'm sure I'll get more comfortable with it as like time goes on but this is very like first YouTube video is you know and I feel awkward and I'm okay with that I'm okay with feeling awkward you know you gotta be okay with being scared and If you did stick around to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. I'm really happy that you gave me your time and I really appreciate you giving me your time because time is precious and I appreciate you a lot. Bye.